Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And, of course, welcome back to our lovely little airfield we have captured two episodes ago. In today's episode, we are going to try and find the main base of the Steel Striders, possibly finding some smaller bases as well. But first of all, we are going to take out this resource zone. Now, sadly, the path we were on seems to be the incorrect one, as you can see we are actually stuck in this cove section we go in here and then we're completely stuck i think i just used the wrong word there either way yeah we can't really go anywhere right now although the land does seem to cut off quite weirdly i think that's just because my vehicle's over there the game's paused and it's simply not loading correctly but either way i think we may need to go either down and around or up and around i don't know which is the best option, so until one of my satellites reaches up here, there's not much I can really do. So I'm going to go ahead, spawn in our new vehicle, and send it against what is called the Watchman. I also think we need to spawn in the forces of this tile, so it's going to be a pretty big fight. Oh, hello! I actually didn't notice that then for an embarrassingly long time, but there we go. By the looks of things, this is the main base of the Steel Striders. I'm really hoping that the Twin Guard aren't hiding their base over here or over here like this, because that would be really irritating. But either way, we have the Damascus, which is really low on fortress strength. That's weird. Why are you so low? I haven't seen a... F we haven't been attacked by a force. And I haven't seen anywhere get reinforced recently. So where did that go? It's still going up pretty quickly, considering we're only in times one right now, which is so slow when you're on the map screen. That's still going up fairly quickly. Of course, we are on times two growth speed. Even if we have taken out one of their resource zones. Wait, have we taken out one or two? There's an easy way to find out. Uh, let's go over to the Steel Striders. It looks like we've probably taken out one. So, yeah, I have no idea where that force has gone then, so I'm a little bit worried, honestly. Either way, I'm going to finish off building the new craft, attack the resource zone, and then go for the main base. After that, we can start waging war against the Twin Guard. I have still been told to lay off from the Scarlet Dawn for a little bit longer. Some of their updates are still pending, and some of them are apparently rather major, and fix a lot of problems. So, if I want to see them at their fullest... I'm going to have to wait for a while. Okay, I've decided we are going to be calling our Nurgle forces the Plague Guard. The reason is, this is a demon warband dedicated to Nurgle, with all of their most revolting things. And it just makes sense that Guard is in the title because they are remarkably tanky, and not much else. So, these vehicles really do fit the name perfectly. The Plague Guard class ships. Just doing a few tweaks here and there, and I think the Plague Guard are now ready for their first proper test battle. Now, one thing I will say is that almost every enemy seems to focus on the center where the AI is, and I am so happy with that, because although this vehicle is quite tanky everywhere, in the center it is almost indestructible. It has heavy armor, it has spaced armor, it has regular armor layered afterwards, because there's just not all that much there. There's the core, and nothing else. The ammo is hidden here and here, and it's just lots of space completely filled with armor and all sorts of things to stop me being hurt. In fact, after a few test battles versus the Changebringer, the Changebringer cannot kill this. Even two versus one, this will win. So I'm really hoping that the Plague Guard does well against the Steel Striders. So the first battle we're going to have with it is going to be two of the Plague Guard and two of the Changebringers against this Strength 150 tile here. I really want to see how they do and if there are any major problems. I've also installed the Missile Interceptors, which are working brilliantly. They are rather large missiles, so they are quite ammo-hungry but they do have two flares and, sorry, one flare and one radar on them, which does distract all types of missiles, which seems to work really well. Also, to everyone who was saying it before, yes, Nurgle does look like a fidget spinner in his logo. I mean, 
He is meant to represent all diseases, after all. Okay, here comes the first battle using only the little god fleet here, even though we are still missing the Slanesh and the Corn element, both of which are going to be bringing the most damage to the group, although the Changebringers can do quite a lot over a reasonably short time. Their damage isn't really that high, they're just very good at taking out very small enemies. They are just, in essence, anti-air and pretty much nothing else. The actual damage per second of them is one of the lowest of any of the craft I have so far built in this campaign, and that includes the Bloodfang. Now of course, thankfully, the Changebringer is also only 5,000 volume, so it does excuse a lot of the lack of damage, but even so, neither of these craft are particularly high damage. So here's a question, have we seen the Typhoon before? By the looks of things, it's an airship. I honestly don't know. We also have the Tadpole here, which is adorable apparently. Well then, let's see how this goes. So, we do actually have three change bringers, not two, so let's do them all like that. There we go, so they won't be hurting each other. You two can go over here and instantly start with a broadside going opposite ways away from each other. Well, let's find out how this works. Here's hoping we see no major issues with the Plague Guard. Okay, so although classed as an air vehicle, the enemy typhoons are in fact subs. They are submarines. Like mini versions of the Black Current. Oh my god, that is a really, really nasty short range missile. Huh. I don't like the look of that, gotta be honest. So where's the tadpole then? I'm going to guess it's this little thing. Okay, continue. Already the, the lasers are firing at that tiny craft and doing their job excellently. Huh, now thankfully we do have sonars equipped on the play guards, so they're not completely useless against subs, but they're not really the best. And here's a problem with cram cannons. Since they almost fire at the start of the fight when enemies are simply staying still, they tend to really underestimate the enemy's movement for the first volley or so, which is really irritating. There are a couple of nice hits there, loads of little shots there from the large cannons, doing a little bit. A little bit. Okay, that just absolutely decimated the front of the enemy hull. Lovely to see, but I think I want to swap targets. See this guy? This guy said Nurgle is stupid. Go on, go and play with him instead. God, that looks so weird, just missing the front. Oh, the new Partal Cannon effects though, so pretty. Hmm. Hmm, will this actually work? Oh yes, it certainly will. Mostly because, mostly because of how close the enemy is, I think, though. Oh, there's some lasers coming in from the change bringer. Of course, sadly, lasers are less effective underwater, so not really the best. Oh, our torpedoes are doing well. I actually completely forgot we had torpedoes. Completely forgot about that. Did that just go inside and the armor's lagging? I don't really know. Um, should I really keep going after this target? Yes. The Plague Guards, though, are holding up really well. The Missile Interceptors, although I didn't really mention about it earlier when I could actually see it happening, are doing incredibly well. Ah, now, here's a problem. The shells do have inertial fuses. They're set to be a little bit more tolerant. That's why most of them are going through, but not quite tolerant enough, apparently. Okay, just let the torpedoes do their thing. They will be targeting those two by themselves anyway. And let's go back to killing this guy. Uh, that cannon doesn't seem too powerful, honestly. Everyone is doing well except for one of the change bringers. Which I'm going to assume is that- oh no, they're all moving, never mind, I thought that guy wasn't moving anymore. Clearly I'm going insane. Lovely, right on the back there, exactly where I wanted it to hit, where the shield was no longer online. Oh, will this get through? Yes, it will. So many missiles. Okay, that missile volley is going to hit, hopefully, mostly in the center. Not actually hitting any of our main weapons. 
Yep, perfect. That's exactly where I wanted to hit. Doing absolutely nothing. One of the guns has been taken off. Like two of them have actually. That's interesting. Why are those two small guns both been taken offline? Just coincidence, I suppose. It just gets jolted every time, and that's actually a really big issue. I I really dislike the way they bounce now since the the most recent update. I think it looks a little bit silly, and it really messes up cram cannons, and cram cannons don't need any more struggles. Oh. Well, you've lost your weapon. Okay, so that's what happened to the more damage change bringer. Hey, focus on this since it's nice and close to one of the player guard. Yep, the other two change bringers are happily firing away. And now they're a bit closer as well, so the laser is going through less water. It is actually doing something. Okay, so one issue has now been highlighted with the Plague Guard. They do not have enough ammunition production on their vehicles, which means they're not firing the torpedoes anywhere near fast enough. It's taking a long time for them to reload. Still doing great at the start when they simply open with a volley of them, but then pretty much nothing. Oh, beautiful. Again, though, with the bounce, even though nothing major was actually destroyed. Any other cram shots following it then would have just missed. I don't like this. It makes me sad face. You won't like me when I'm sad face. Lovely. Heavy armor even on the smaller craft. How expensive is this? Whoa, 61k for this. Okay. And rapidly being destroyed by cram cannon shots. Okay, the Plague Guard are still holding up really well, though, so it's not too much of a big deal that only one of the subs has so far been crippled. The other one is still happily firing away. The missiles just aren't doing well enough, honestly. Well, even the crippled one can still fire, though, and actually I do want to swap targets again just because of how close this is getting to one of the Plague Guard. If we can get a couple of good shots on here, this would be perfect. Just one good one in the center, please. Come on. Please, 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 please. No. So annoying. So irritating. These are so ridiculously tanky. Thank you. Something actually hitting it. The issue is, as it gets closer, the cram cans fire lower, and thus they have less of a decent arc, which makes them worse. Which is... I wish the game could have an AI setting so it understands how the projectiles would be affected by water, but that simply isn't the case. We are slowly winning, though. Its fire rate has really slowed down at this stage, and we are countering them every single time. So it's just a matter of slowly picking away at it. Though really highlighting an issue, if we were able to fire the torpedoes constantly like we're supposed to, then this wouldn't have even been an issue. After leaving the AI off for just a moment so that we could replenish ammo and then firing all of the torpedoes at once, the first of the subs was successfully taken down. Which means this is now the last enemy and as you can see the remains of those torpedoes hitting and removing a large chunk from the side. If the entire battle this was happening the issue wouldn't have even been raised. I really overestimated how much ammo the play guards had. Maybe it was because subconsciously I just wanted the, them to be as tanky as possible. Which of course means less ammo. But I also don't want to use ammo processors because they cost a fortune over time and I like how little these things cost to actually run. I guess you can't have the best of everything. And finally we win. 
what a messy first battle. At least we have highlighted a few problems. Uh, the change bringers did exactly what I expected them to. They killed the small craft and then struggled to damage the larger craft, as they are meant to. The uh, plague guards, cram cannons, really good. Detection systems work perfectly, everything else fine. How tanky they are, superb. Ammo storage. Of all the things I didn't think would be a major issue, ammo storage. I think it was because I haven't done enough tests when I've been using the missile interceptors, which themselves are actually quite ammo hungry. So adding that to the mix just put it over the edge. Overall though, we did get quite a few resources from the fight without taking too much damage, so I would consider this a successful battle, just one which a problem was highlighted. Okay, I jumped into the sandbox mode very quickly, and I've made a couple of changes which I think should help out quite a bit. So now we do have a little bit more ammo which has been spread out along the vehicle in small, very heavily armoured sort of blocks, and that should help out. We now have 25,500 resources, and by resources I mean ammunition, which of course does regenerate faster since each barrel of ammo regenerates ammo all by itself magically, I think via the power of the dark gods. And of course more of them equals more ammo per time. Hurrah! Basic math there. I've also changed some of the torpedoes, they are a little bit better, and I've made it so the missiles fire significantly slower. I was really firing too many at once, they kind of just intercepted each other, they were just going after the same targets, doing very little since there were so many in the air, so now that they're firing slower they're also a little bit less ammo hungry. Other than that, pretty much the same vehicle, still really happy with it. Let's run into the next battle. Once again, I will be using the Play Guard, although I think I will be br will be bringing in the Medrin Guard to fight against this Strength 150. Why are you not sending these to attack me? You see, earlier I thought I was just going mad, thinking that they were just going the wrong way, uh, they were vanishing, but yeah, they are just going the wrong way. I guess reinforcing tiles which no longer belongs to them or something? It's a little bit weird. Oh, well that was just stupid. I've got so close they've actually locked in on me. Okay, so it is completely because of how far away we were? Does that mean if I run away, they will lose their lock? Kind of, yeah, but now they're trying to reinforce this tile. So what do we have? The Panther, the Tadpole, and the Black Current. That would not be difficult, even if we don't use the Medrin Guard. So I guess I just wait, and then we ambush them. We are definitely the good guys. Right now, I could have attacked the enemy whilst the Black Current was literally on land, but I decided to move out so that they could actually attack us properly to make sure our lovely Plague Guards are actually working correctly. Ain't we just so nice? Okay, here we go, testing out our lovely fleet once again. This time around, I would like the Plague Guards to spawn quite close for their torpedoes hitting the enemy straight away, and the Change Bringers can go... Honestly, it doesn't really matter too much. They tend to outmaneuver missiles okay, so they're not too much at risk, but we will probably lose one or two. Thankfully, they are very cheap, and that's not really of any major consequence. Oh, now that's adorable! It's like an even smaller version of the subs! What exactly is that? That's the panther. So what else do we have on the other side? Is it just one of the tadpoles? I think it is. Anything else? Oh, there's so many variants of these tiny little things! Okay then. Continue. Of course, right now, our lasers are going to have some fun whilst it's not out of the water. In the water, rather. Okay, what's going on? Okay, that was we. I'm guessing they're trying to focus on the tadpole, which then became a single block. That keeps on happening. Oh, all of those missiles just dive-bombing the water thanks to our missile interceptors. Absolutely beautiful. The cram cannons coming in and doing a load of damage as well. Torpedoes coming in from both sides, hitting quite well as well. Okay, the crams are doing great, whilst it's not that deep. Now that was a really good start. Oh, they can actually heal each other. Well, that is something I did not expect. Now 
Now, I will probably skip a lot of this battle unless something really fantastic happens, because it is going to be just seeing this over and over for quite some time. Well, that's interesting. The enemy seems to have some type of map. Oh, it's their territory. That's cool. And, of course, we found this out by destroying a large chunk via a cram cannon shell. One of the subs is now down, and I believe the smaller two had also been destroyed, meaning that right now, if I'm correct, yep, the only enemy left is the Black Current itself, and it's already down by over 20% health, and it is being hit repeatedly. As you can see, even the weapon sections are looking very bad right now. The outer armor has been stripped in multiple places, and now the smaller vessels are gone, the lasers will be changing targets to try and face this. I have been so ridiculous ridiculously impressed by the missile interceptors of the Plague Guard. I am just so happy about that. I don't know why they're working so well. I've used them so many times in the past, but I've never seen them perform this well. I think it's because of how big they are. They have both of the distraction types and because we're using two Plague Guard at the same time, and both of their variable fire rates, I think it's just countering everything inside. But yeah, really happy with that. And we haven't had to use munition lasers, which makes me happy as well. One thing I will say, though, is that I keep on seeing the torpedoes just go past their targets, not actually focusing on them. There's no chance that the radars in my distraction missiles are actually distracting them, right? No, clearly not. They don't go after radar, they go after mass. Right? I think so. Now, if we pause time for a second, it looks like we may be able to get this to such a low degree of health, I wouldn't feel too bad about stealing it. It's clearly not winning the fight at this stage. It's just not hurting anyone. Why is one of the Plague Guards still called Nurgle? Once again, missiles being completely distracted. That is not the location of one of our allies. I think as well, some of the missiles are trying to go for our very, very quick change bringers, and that's just not working out. Okay, clearly it's not quite as hurt as I first thought it was, so please continue. Whoa. Well, that looked trippy for a sec. Oh my god, don't kill me! Thanks, Plague Guard. Love you, boo. Alas, the enemy is now too damaged. This is the problem with my honor rules. This happens a lot because I have to wait until the enemy is no longer able to fight back and thus cannot win the battle. Otherwise, I could just capture vehicles to win a fight rather than as a spoil of war. I am bound by honor. But at least we get to see this thing disintegrate, which is kind of awesome. And now what I need to do is take a look at the torpedoes and why they're acting so weird. Most of them seem to be just fine, and it's not like one of the launchers doesn't have the sonar or anything. It's just... Sometimes they just don't go for the target. Ta-da! We no longer have to use the Dragon's Claw. Now, I will be remaking the Dragon's Claw eventually. It's on the long list of things I want to make. But for now, I think this will do a little bit better since it can go underwater. It's the test nuke, but with rams rather than nukes. Probably the most difficult retrofit I've ever had to do. Moving out. Okay, let's draw out the defense forces, which have a lot of enemies, actually. Oh wow, the change bringers are going to be happy. The Hydra, the Hydra, the Cinder, what else? The Manatee? Okay, lots of things there, and the Reaper. So, yeah, let's just get ourselves back, and let's get ready to fight it. Well then, here comes the fight. I'm also bringing in our lovely Nucleus Test Nuke, because I just want to be sitting on it during the fight, honestly. I really think we should win this pretty easily. We have a massive force advantage right now with three of our 
Plague Guards. I keep on wanting to call them Change Guards because I've been saying Change Bringer so much and I keep on having to force myself to stop. Also, you are facing the wrong way, but saying that, do I really want you that way? Yeah, sure, why not? Begin the battle. Now, the Change Bringers are going to do most of the work here, honestly. So, I can't see the Plague Guards doing much, except for providing a lot of anti miss Okay, everyone is in combat, and... Why are you firing your torpedoes? Oh, because one of them started off in the water. Okay. I was a little bit concerned there. Oh, look at you. Wait. Wait a second. Didn't I fight you in Ashes of the Empire? I am 99% sure I did. The Reaper? Yes, I did. Now, the thing is, you don't really duck and dive too much, if I'm, remem if I'm remembering correctly, and you're the largest here, which means, hopefully, the Cram Cannons will actually have quite a fun time targeting you. Are those the auto cannon simple weapons? That is awesome, I love that. Okay, well then. So many missiles. Oh, the lasers tearing the first enemy apart straight away. Crashing into each other, just making that damage spread so beautifully. I am very, very pleased with that at least. Yeah, didn't really expect the cram cannons to land all that much, honestly. If they do, it'll be a one-shot kill, but still. Wow, yeah, these guys cannot stand up to the laser damage at all. I'm a little bit confused that this is a strength 150 when you can have their largest vehicle with a few escorts for the same strength. Oh, Cram's actually hitting there, knocking it sideways and devastating the insides. Goodbye. Also, a lot of friendly fire from the enemies as well. Well, this was certainly a lot faster than the fights earlier. Love the, the style, though, of these crafts. For those who know the YouTuber Rosefall, he actually made at least the trident for this faction. I don't know if it's still in the game, I haven't seen it, because sadly it is an expert class vehicle, so it doesn't really spawn in that much ungodly. Oh, friendly fire from the shells being removed from this one's weapon. Oh, that is so sad. But yeah, he is very good at making things which look gorgeous, so it's very... It's very obvious that the Steel Striders were a faction that would accept him. Good night, sweet prince. Whoa, that's like a firework display. There's a chunk there falling off one of them. Uh, who are we targeting right now? This guy over here? Okay. Oh, wow. The nuke actually got me all the way into combat. Sadly, everything was already too damaged. I completely forgot we were actually doing that. Hello. Did I just capture this? I can't capture on purpose. But by accident, sure, why not? So we managed to capture ourselves a Hydra. Let's have a quick look-see. Hello there. Oh, look at you. You're so chunky but tiny. I love that. I really, really like this. Huh. Are those rotors mostly for display? Uh, yeah, they don't even use the motor drive, so they're not exactly too potent. So how are you flying? Oh, you're using PID system, okay. So you're actually essentially a flying hovercraft or a flying airship. But tiny and made to look more like a drone. Which is fine, yeah, because here we have the main rotor near the center of mass. This also has always up, so that's what's keeping it stable and giving it a lot of lift. Then we have a lot of these. Let's see if it's using a PID system. I'm fairly confident it will be. Oh, God. Trying to look at other people's designs is so difficult. Yeah, there we are. And that is for pitch. And this is for 
aerial roll, okay. Using the AI PID and the general purpose. I don't use the AI PID very much. I've had very little success with it. What a nice craft, though, overall. Just, it looks really good. It's very functional. 42k for 3,500. This is almost as big as the change bringer. Just to remind everyone how small the change bringers actually are. What would I change with this? I don't know, but I feel like a corrupt version of this will be heading towards our fleet fairly soon. Welcome to the Legion. Well then, here we go. The enemy main fortress, or at least I believe it's the main fortress, versus three of our Plague Guard and one of our test nukes without the nukes. So let's have a quick look-see then what it's actually made of. So we have advanced cannons, we have advanced cannons, we have missiles. I'm guessing that's a distraction against the missiles. It very well could be, it's hard to tell. Oh, hello. We have torpedoes. This thing really likes its weapons. That's big. Really big cram cannons. Uh, and I think that's it for weapons. And no smoking, at least it's health conscious. Oh yeah, more advanced cannons. And of course, munition defenses. And more advanced cannons. And more advanced cannons. Smoke defenses as well. And it's also making an aircraft. It's making two aircraft. Okay. This is a little bundle of hell, isn't it? Okay, then let's um, see how this goes. Begin. Whoa, that's a lot of lag. Um, nuke, go for the enemy, thank you. Oh jeez, that is insane. On the upside, we get to see a volley of tiny little cannons firing at something large. Behold! Cramming coming, doing a fair bit, thankfully. Oh, I was holding on to the weapon at the end there. Well, that's why the nuke was going a bit mad. Okay, how many weapons have we taken out? It seems like these ones over here were quite vulnerable. Sadly, one is still up and running, firing back. I haven't seen the large cram cannon fire yet. This just went down. I'm not sure what killed it. I would like to believe it was this from one of the smaller cannons. It wasn't, but we can believe it was. Imagination, everyone. And we are still going towards the target, so I'm going to stay on board for a little bit longer. Oh, I don't want to stop and take too much damage. Incoming the volley of the little cannons. Yeah, a few things got destroyed there. Okay, just stop. Okay, now sadly I did just die, so I had to sort of bounce down. So, where is the AI? I'm thinking probably in one of these two buildings. It just makes sense for, it, for them to be there. Oil extraction center, resource extraction center. Well, at least it's going to be harvesting straight away by itself. Aha! Hello there! You have an easy access as well, which is really good. Wow, yeah, you're like completely exposed already. Let, let's go there before it finishes making one of the helicopters. Everything is detonating and I'm down to only six frames per second. Um, down we go. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? How are you doing, matey? Please be the only one. And? Nope, the lag went away for a second, but nope, that was definitely not it. So somewhere else there is a second mainframe. Oh, it's so close to finishing that helicopter. Thankfully, it's one of those which are not exactly the most agile, so it won't be able to fight by itself. Please don't be up here. It'll be so annoying if it's up here. Uh, it doesn't look like it is, at least. Which is good. But that doesn't mean we still need to find it. Oh, it's so nice when paused. The lag is completely gone. Beautiful. The frame drops. Is that an AI? Yes, it is. Where is that? 
Okay, that's just going to be stupidly annoying to get to. Hopefully that's the last one, though. Oh, no. Please miss. Please miss. Please miss. Please. You didn't miss. Okay. I'll just pretend that did absolutely nothing. Can you bugger off? Did I just... I didn't just capture that, did I? Right? I did capture it. But it's still being held by... I... Okay. Okay, I'll just accept that as it is. So, I died again, and I didn't really fancy taking a swim. So... Thanks for the little um, piggyback ride there, my lovely play guard. Now back to what I was doing before, trying to get in through destroying its butt. Well, I just captured the vehicle apparently. I was busy shooting away when it happened. I imagine some of the minigun shots simply went through and finally gave me the win. I had to pause the game though and mute it because the minigun was firing in the background. So, fall of a nation. The Steel Striders, the last holdout of the Steel Empire, founded on the principles of the one great world under the iron thumb of the Steel leadership. Some called them protectors, and others called them tyrants, except for Jeff. He called them fluffy. What do you call them? You call them ash, dust, and blood at your feet. Now the people follow you and look to you for protection. <laughs> Will you fulfill their hopes or their worst nightmares? I mean, we are the good guys, after all. So... I imagine we're going to be really nice. Now, can you please kill those little bugs flying around? Aha, face throw off my little anti-air gun. Oh, That's so weird without any audio. Just... Deathly silence. Because I haven't unmuted the game yet. Oh, how unfortunate. And we actually captured one of these, so if we ever want to make a swarm of them, we certainly can. No, st stop trying to kill it. It's ours now. Yay! Wow, that thing can repair quickly. And the battle is finished. Oh, we actually captured two of them. At least we got the designs for them now. So there we are. Let's allow it to fully heal up, and then I'll be right back to have a look-see how it looks now under our glorious reign. Oops. I meant to delete blocks. It's my vehicle now, it's my structure, it's my fortress. I can do what I please. Everything heal, including little flies. So, what's this I managed to capture? You two, spawn in. What do we have over here then? Okay, so we have you. Oh, we caught one of those! I know the trident used to spawn you, at least I believe it did. I remember you being really annoying to hit. Not quite as annoying as the flying squirrel, but... You tried. You certainly tried. Now that's actually really similar to what I wanted from the, from the Slanesh fighters, the swarm. Oh, it'd be so easy to just convert this thing a little bit. No, I'd rather build it from scratch, because then I know exactly how it's built, and so I can alter it more in the future. You're both just... you're so small and adorable. You look more like toys. Now that's interesting. The unlimited resource zone we've got is six per second. I think that might be the strongest in the game for the unlimited ones. Five per second from the white flyers. Now, admittedly, we do have multiple from the Grey Talons. We have a two, we have a four, and we have a... Well, another two. And another one, which makes, obviously, the Grey Talons better, but... Three from the Deepwater Guard. And four from the Onyx Watch. So, yeah, the largest single one, anyway. 
Well then, the fortress is now back to 100% health, and thankfully, it has all of these lovely, lovely oil refineries. Now, these aren't particularly efficient per material, but that is making a lot of fuel, which is really good, because we now have so many fuel-using vehicles. Beforehand, we simply didn't, and this was never an issue. So, really happy to see those, and yeah... We're going to have loads of these little vehicles very, very quickly. So with that, I'm afraid I am all out of time. In the next video, we will be going towards the west, towards the Twin Guard. After which, we can finally take on the Scarlet Dawn. I will, of course, wait a while until they're fully updated, but if I simply finish the Twin Guard too quickly, I can't wait forever. I am looking forward to doing other campaigns, of course, and in the next video, I should have have one more vehicle to add to the collection of the Dark Gods, either the Slanesh or the Corn Vehicle. The Corn Vehicle is either going to be extremely aggressive with perhaps some maximum gauge weaponry or something similar to that, or just spamming some kind of weapon, perhaps even missiles or even ramming, but either way it will be incredibly aggressive and the Slanesh vehicle will be over the top because Slanesh is the god of excess, so it has to be something like that. Probably something stupid like a swarm of angry little bees. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. I had a lot of fun today using weapons we normally don't use. We need to do that more often. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.